we're Maybe now live. <laughs> um, this is uh, the continuation of the afternoon committee of the House Appropriations um, Committee meeting. And we have with us today um, Treasurer Pierce. Welcome, Treasurer. Always nice to see you. And we have about a half hour, I think, that uh, we can um, cover uh, your budgetary changes that you have within your budget. And there were some also, there, there are a few other, uh, other issues that we wanted to discuss um, around uh, the state finances and borrowing and uh, appropriate to do when, and also maybe you might have time to talk about uh, any pressures or changes that you're thinking of with the structure of our pension and retirement system. So um, we have a quorum here, and so um, uh, Treasurer Pierce, thank you for coming. And I'm going to first turn it over to you with your budget. And uh, Diane, you have the treasurer's budget. I always, it's Diane or Maida. Who has the treasurer's budget? I have the teacher's retirement. I used to have the treasurer's, but Maida has it. And Maida I have it. the teacher's retirement. Is Maida coming back on? And so, uh, from our time in January, I don't think there were any uh, changes to your budget, was there? Uh, you unmuted you. You should be okay. I unmuted you. You're good to go. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we um, we had a very conservative budget, as you know. We, uh, as I pointed out, we've actually reduced our budget um, general fund, or excuse me, administrative expense uh, since 2009. Uh, we uh, we have had some increase in pension, um, in re uh, excuse me, retirement system administration. Uh, as you know, we we add to retirees each year. Uh, we have a pretty lean staff about. Uh, uh, 13 or 14 staff in uh, in the uh, retirement division. They did 495 or 496 retirements uh, in the month of July. Uh, and those were made up of uh, teachers as well as municipal and state. There was an increase in, in the teacher retirements this year. I do How many not- did you say? 458? 496 retirements in the month of July. So. We counseled. We uh, we we confirmed their uh, their intent to retire. We um, we got them on the payroll. We did the calculations on what their retirement are, and they got it on. And that's a given. The um, the um, uh, the way we're doing business now with uh, remote processing. Although I will admit that they did have to come in for various uh, pieces of paper on this. That's an incredible effort on the part of the uh, the retirement division. Um, so we do not have a very large staff there. I am going to admit that I did not come prepared to talk about the budget today. And uh, my apologies, I thought it was on uh, two issues, which is borrowing and pensions. Um, but um, our budget is fairly lean. We did comply with the administration's um, effort to reduce that budget um, um, and we're able to do so. Um, we, um, um, but again, there are no real different same staff, same size. You know, we had some um, some uh, increases in um, in in um, investment expenses, which is um, uh, I'm going to take that back. I have to verify that because some of our investment expenses are through directly through the managers, um, as opposed to an appropriation where they net, net a fees. But we've what we've done in the pension system has. Um, uh, over the years, we're, we're, we're averaging about a $6 million decrease in, um, in pension expenses uh, uh, across all three systems. And again, some of that may be net of fees and not in your budget. Um, uh, healthcare is a part of the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the monies we have, but I believe that's a, um, uh, a demand budget. Um, and our, um, uh, again, our administrative expenses were no real surprises. We had a you know few here and there. We are uh, spending some money updating and backing up our uh, systems, which we try to make improvements each year. Uh, we have a very good backup system across the board uh, uh, and in terms of our technology. Uh, we did, um, we are looking this year for a new, um, uh, uh, new check printer. Um, it's always good to be able to print your checks and uh, 
uh, you know, we um, uh, we have a backup. But uh, during the um, the unemployment, when we issued the eight thousand uh, checks, uh, we had to go pick up our, ba our backup printer and bring it over to to our office. Um, uh, and uh, so so we do have um, uh, that in our budget. I'm going to defer on having any other questions. It's a straightforward budget. I apologize. Um, I can have Michael Clausen, our mm -hmm. deputy treasurer, join this conversation if you think that's um, necessary. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I, I think that I will have uh, made a follow up with you, just of, of any uh, changes in your budget. And you were right. One of the concerns that I brought to you was from the end of the session. But before I get to that question, I see that Maida, uh, not Maida, uh, Linda has a question. So let's go to Linda's question first, please. Uh, yeah. At, at, at the beginning, when you started talking about retirements and you wrote, you wrote the number 496, mm -hmm. from where? I, that's, that's what I missed. Okay, 496 additional retirements in the month of July. For uh, what, what retirements? State government or what? What government? State, what are, state teachers and municipal. Okay, okay. The majority are, are teachers. Um, and uh, I can have uh, one of my staff um, uh, who's listening uh, send that information if you like. I'm going to go pick up my phone. Um, but uh, again, um, I uh, did not come uh, prepared to talk about the budget. Uh, my apologies. But uh, that was a pretty um, a, uh, a major effort this year. And it is every year, but having to do it remotely is... Um, uh, even more difficult, but our staff uh, stepped up and uh, were there, uh, uh, managed to get it done in the challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, I apologize, Beth. Um, we, we've been doing budgets and I did ask for you to come in because I wanted to talk specifically um, uh, about uh, where we are with our pension obligations. And um, also, I wanted to talk, uh, we, we were given a question last, uh, when we left in June on the floor about borrowing. Mm -hmm. And I would like to, you to talk to the committee about, um, you know, I, you know our financial, you've seen the, um, uh, the, um, the official revenue forecast that was mm -hmm. in by the e-board. Uh, you know where we're headed in fiscal year 22. However, do we really know because we've been told by our state economists that things are still very uncertain and the path forward mm -hmm. is clear. But for this committee, when we're looking at, you know, uh, adding revenue or um, making reductions or borrowing to, mm -hmm. to uh, keep programs in place, if we could get an idea where we are in fiscal year 21 and, and what type of scenario you would recommend borrowing under. Okay. Well, to be very candid, I would not recommend uh, external borrowing. As you know, then during the, um, uh, the, uh, the transition um, um, session that you had the, uh, 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 in May and June and uh, extending for a very period of time, I want to thank you all folks for doing this, and you're probably all sick of Zoom at this point in time. But uh, <laughs> what can I say? Um, we did have you authorize a, um, an internal borrowing, an inner fund borrowing, so that you could borrow uh, from, from different funds, including um, uh, segregated um, uh, funds um, to, to meet your cash flow needs. We did not believe we would need that, um, but we uh, um, did that as a backstop. And uh, I think that was a good move. And I appreciate the work um, uh, the committee did on that. Um, um, they, I'm, I'm hearing that you can't see my face. Is that correct? I can. You're just, oh, yeah, okay. just barely. <laughs> okay. So let me, um, let me see. Is that better? No. Nope. Uh, there we go. Okay. I'm, I'm really good with technology. Uh, so we did not, uh, use that. That was a cash flow borrowing and that's very different if we had to use it. That's very different than, uh, what I would call an appropriation or deficit borrowing, uh, which if you're looking to fill a gap in your budget, I would uh, refer to that as a, as a deficit borrowing. And it's also an external borrowing as opposed to borrowing from ourselves, which we repay. Um, and uh, um, uh, an external borrowing is something else. And I would not recommend it uh, in terms of, um, um, of deficit. I think I would remind you of a couple of points. Borrowing is not a revenue source. It's a way of um, financing and what you're doing is you're leveraging a future stream of revenue uh, to, um, to bring it forward and to pay um, for, for um, uh, 
uh, generally capital needs uh, in the future. Borrowing doesn't add um, um, new revenues in most cases. There are some cases where, you know, if you exceed the cost of inflation uh, for, again, capital projects, um, that would make some sense. Um, but uh, uh, you can't borrow your way out of a deficit without sacrificing revenue in the future. Borrowing also costs money in the form of interest. And we've done various studies for different types of borrowing, uh, housing, different um, uh, energy efficiency. Now those are longer term borrowings, I will grant you that. But you know, we're talking about 28, 30% um, interest uh, payments against the, uh, the bond. And that's not, the rates are low, but you're doing this over a 20 year period. Uh, we have done cash flow borrowings in the past. As I said, we did not need it now. The last time we did it was in 2004. We call that a revenue anticipation note. And we did that to anticipate some cash flow needs. As you know, um, uh, Act 68 payments go out in September and December. Uh, you typically get most of your revenue in the spring with April 15th and so on. Um, so in a lot of, um, with our climate, a lot of that infrastructure comes in the first part of the year. Uh, we did do a short-term borrowing in 2004, but I think the message is we've never done, we haven't done one since. And I think that's very important. Uh, this is, um, um, you know, this is an area where we get good grades from the rating agencies and we really shouldn't uh, um, um, uh, make, we should make every effort not to re uh, re reverse course. Um, Could you explain what happened in 2004 that sure. caused the short-term borrowing? Um, at that point, your reserves were not um, as um, um, significantly funded. As you know, you've been working, and I commend the legislature for putting money into reserves because that has really helped us um, in the um, in, in the COVID crisis. It certainly helped in the 2008 recession as well, uh, where we did not need to borrow. But back in 2004, um, we needed to borrow to meet our, our cash flow needs. Not in a not a revenue issue, not an appropriation issue. But again, you, you typically do a lot of your infrastructure work over the summer and the fall. And at the same time, you're putting out the Act 68 payments to, um, to communities as well as uh, in September and in December. So we borrowed money um, in December. Um, I, um, someplace, I do not remember if it was 46 or 48 million and we repaid that back in, uh, in February. And again, that was a short term uh, revenue anticipation note. Um, again, you know, you've accumulated reserves, uh, so we've negated the re need to do that. We put aside some money in 2008 uh, if that was necessary, you know, um, but we did not have to use it. And again, this is uh, something that uh, we've stressed to the rating agencies that we have not had to borrow uh, to meet our cash flow needs. Uh, even if you're looking at deficit bonding, which is what I would describe this, if you're looking to fill um, a revenue, um, that is something that, um, uh, again, I would not recommend. We did some of that, uh, and I'm gonna go look at my notes here. We did some of that um, back in the 90s, um, early in the 90s. Um, we, um, um, that uh, was not uh, something that uh, we would wanna repeat uh, that was necessary at that time. Again, our reserves uh, weren't as um, um, significant as they are now. Uh, and uh, for me, that's, um, um, that's something that you really want to avoid doing. Again, it's, what it's doing is taking money from future revenue sources and bringing it forward, and, and you will have a gap down the year, down in the future years uh, with that, and it will cost you uh, significant dollars. And it will have an, an I believe, uh, I can't say, you know, for sure what the rating agencies would say, uh, you know, in our in our COVID situation, um, but um, it, um, it it is not advisable. And I just saw my notes. We issued about 65 million in deficit bonds in the early 90s, and again, we've accumulated reserves, so that is not necessary. And it's simply put, you can't borrow your way out of a debt. Uh, it's it's a deficit. You just can't do that. Um, it's it's not good practice. And uh, you don't do that at home. Um, you, you, you restructure your revenue, uh, revenues, you restructure your expenditures, but borrowing your way out of a deficit is not an advisable solution. Uh, the other thing, sure. I just wanted to add, do, do committee members have any questions on the borrowing piece, Mary? Yeah, thank you. So I hadn't realized that we had done what you're calling deficit borrowing for 
and we bonded for that money and it mm -hmm. was 65 million. What was the payback period and what was the total cost of the borrowing? Okay, I, I don't have this information. It predated me. Uh, I'm using that off of some or, uh, annual reports I did see from the, um, uh, the tr treasurer at the time. Uh, I'd have to go back and get those, uh, that information for you. I I would be interested in that. I, I, I know that some of our colleagues have expressed an interest in doing this. And I'd like to just understand what our past history is. And did you say 65 or uh, did I flip the, the numbers? According to the annual report that I saw from the treasurer at the time, it was 65 million. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said 46. Uh, 46 or 48 was the RAND that we did in 2004, which was a short-term cash borrowing. So in the 90s, it was 65. It was 65, and that was a um, deficit borrowing uh, through external markets. Yeah. Thank you. And if, and if you wouldn't mind the time frame and also the interest rate, as well as the total cost of that borrowing. Okay. Well, I, I would point out the interest rates change over time, but we would definitely get that. Yeah, I mean, because part of what folks are saying now is, gosh, interest rates are so low that surely this is a reasonable time. And I just for comparables. Sure. Yeah. Well, I would point out that even if it's a, a, um, a, um, a short, um, very good rates in the treasury markets right now, uh, there have been wider spreads in the bond market. Um, and the bond market has been very yeah. volatile uh, since the COVID crisis. Um, and some of that's abated. Um, and frankly, um, um, the Feds, the Federal Reserve had to come in and uh, prop up the market. Uh, so in April, um, uh, and the, the market was frozen. Um, a number of AAA states pulled their bonds back because um, there were really no buyers at that point in time. As I said, the Fed stepped in and rates were very high. I remember one entity, now this was a transit bond, so it's a little different, that bonded in, um, in January, I believe. And then they did another bond in um, April and May. Um, again, I'm doing this from memory. And they paid four times as much uh, for the bond, uh, for the interest rate. Uh, um, and, you know, there's, there is, you know, volatility has been abated, um, but uh, there's no, uh, no guarantee that that will continue. And, if we have additional COVID uh, issues and, uh, and related impacts or uh, in terms of time or it gets worse, um, I, I could see some, uh, some, again, some volatility in the market. It also becomes volatile when, I'm just gonna say it, when DC politicians uh, um, put out uh, different types of, um, of uh, comments that, uh, that uh, may play in, the, uh, in, uh, in the, the media, but they're not helpful to the bond market. There was one instance where it was suggested that uh, there would be no help for municipalities or states, and uh, they were on their own, and the market shifted very much the next day. Uh, so again, it's, um, when you look at it, an investor um, that's gonna buy your bonds wants to know that he or she is going to be repaid. And uh, when there is more risk, and clearly during COVID, uh, we've seen risk in terms of liquidity in many states. Uh, and we did not have that problem. As I said, we did not need to do an interfund borrowing. And our cash position, because of the reserves, because of the good management that the, the General Assembly has done, and I would like to thank the Treasury as well, we have not had to, um, 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 we have plenty of, uh, well, I wouldn't say plenty, we have sufficient cash to meet our needs. And we continue to meet with the administration it was at first a weekly, now it's a bi-weekly basis to assess what their expenses are and what uh, um, uh, that are going out the door and where our revenues are. And we believe that we're, uh, we have sufficient cash to meet our, our needs at this point in time. But again, the market's been a little bit um, up and down. It's been a little crazy. I was informed today um, by a... Um, I meet every 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 other week now with uh, treasurers and comptrollers across the state, to, uh, across the country. Excuse me to to review this. And um, uh, the treasurer of Georgia today informed me that uh, that tax exempt bonds were um, uh, were cheaper than ta than tax exempt bonds, and that makes very little sense to me. Um, I'm going to investigate that. I just heard that today. But again, the markets are volatile. Um, people have pulled back their bonds. They've had um, differing issues. Uh, this is not a very good time uh, in, the, um, in the public finance uh, bond issuance um, community. Um, yes, did I hear a question? 
No, okay. Uh, the state also we do, has- We do have three other questions, Beth, that if we could cover those. Uh, I have one from, uh, were you done, Mary? I don't want to cut you off. I have Representative Lanfer, Helm, and Yacovoni. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're going we're gonna to probably have to answer these questions, Beth, and we need your help to make sure that we understand. Um, but maybe you can help to clue us in on when would you think it might be a good time to buy? What would the circumstances be that would say this would be a good time to borrow? Well, I think borrowing happens only in a couple uh, in certain conditions, and and you consider borrowing when uh, um, you have uh, basically three conditions: that uh, the cost of acceler accelerated inflation, so inflation and preventive maintenance, and uh, um, is is something where if if you do it now, you're paying less interest on uh, your overall your um, than uh, the cost of inflation. Yeah. Uh, if you do um, back when we were doing some bridges and uh, um, some of that work fixing it now meant you know, two things number one you know pay for it now or pay more later um and uh, including the cost of inflation including maintenance issues around it so that's one area and that's what i think that um the capital the tip, the tip. The tip yeah. but the institutions committee uh, concentrates on and you know the more we put mm -hmm. ongoing costs in there um that do not have the same inflation factor that i think that that's a problem um the second uh issue is that um uh, that you have quantifiable economic benefits. And I need to, um, to, to emphasize it needs to be quantifiable and proven. Uh, we always talk about this will, this will help with uh, the economy, this, but we don't have any data to support it. And I think that that um, um, is, is an issue as is, is we have these conversations. Uh, the third reason is something that uh, is a little more theoretical. It's called intergenerational equity. So that if you're building a school, for instance, uh, you might want to um, to to have um, future generations pay it, pay for it, um, and spread it over uh, time for the taxpayer. There's an interest cost again in doing that. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of that um, particular um, philosophy, but I've seen other communities um, um, do that. I've also seen communities that put everything in pay go. They don't uh, they don't do debt uh, because it's cheaper. You know, to do it that way, and you're not uh, and you're not impacting future revenue sources um, and the other is to unlock additional funds such as federal matching funds uh, the uh, uh, Champlain I believe uh, we paid um, 10 New York paid 10 percent and the feds paid 80 percent and that was a, a pretty good deal to, to do that and you have a future identifiable revenue source and it needs to be available it needs to be predictable. It needs to be reliable and sufficient under different economic scenarios. And I would suggest that in the COVID um, situation we are in, we're not meeting that criteria. And if you notice the other criteria, um, very much about bricks and mortar and uh, not, not filling a, a budget hole uh, with a borrowing. I don't know if that answers your question. Maybe more Thank so. You. To hear. Thank you. Uh, the other um, thing, would, uh, yes, uh, I, I, before you move to a different topic, can we move to uh, Representative Helm and Yacovoni? And we have about five minutes left, so I apologize. Uh, Bob. I will be quick. Um, so I think the, the way you get to people is say, take a look at what your home costs you. Now, you mm -hmm. might have bought it for 199000 but then you financed it over 20 years or 30, whatever it was, to take a real look at what it costs you to help hit home. A lot of people don't even get, I don't think they even study that. Mm -hmm. But I think one of our biggest problems is they don't study that, but we also have two year terms. Not that four or six year terms would make it any better, but a lot of people can erase it from themselves in, mm -hmm. with a two-year term very easily. And this phone will shut up in a minute. That's you, Bob. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Oh, yeah, was oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm done. Lottery. I'm done. Okay. Mine plays the blues, and I know we didn't have any blues there. So, okay. Uh, Representative Yacovoni. I think you're on mute, sir. There we go. Um, 
we listened to the economist uh, August 12th, I think it was, and, and the members on the committee can correct me if I misunderstood them. But they said, if you're in a difficult time, um, you will hurt the economy if you make deep budget cuts. Mm -hmm. They also said, you will hurt the economy if you have to raise taxes significantly. Now, as an aside, they talked a little bit about maybe surcharges, but they didn't get into that as a possibility, perhaps on those with very high incomes. So given that, not now I may be misinterpreting now, but our situation right now, while it's serious, is not as dire as I thought it was going to be back in April. Mm -hmm. But um, if we were in a really serious situation and they're saying, don't eviscerate services, it ends up being a cost shift to the municipalities, um, people need government during hard times, and you don't want to tax them because they don't have the money, not a lot of other choices left. So why wouldn't, during a situation like that, if you believe eventually the economy will change and you'll come out of a, a downturn and you'll have identified revenue sources, but it's just a period of time that you need help, you're still saying borrowing is wrong. I would and, say um, I, I don't disagree, but I need a little help uh, persuading people on that. Okay. So I think there are a couple of things in that question. Uh, and I interrupted you, sir. Is there anything else to that that you would like to add? Given our... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. You're doing fine. Yeah. Sure. So uh, number one, the state has limited borrowing capacity. And uh, uh, there was a cost of debt, debt service. Um, if we were to do that, uh, there's a very real risk that um, it would have um, in impact on the bond rating factors. Um, and I should point out that this is the assessment of our financial advisor in, and uh, the treasurer's office. Uh, we haven't had a direct contact with the rating agencies. But borrowing, um, uh, you know, uh, would, would imp increase our... Um, our, our risk of um, exceeding the, the, a, um, a capacity level that's considered reasonable for a highly rated state. And uh, if you, you would crowd out future available revenues, and there's a real risk that the state's long-term borrowing costs would rise under those, um, those circumstances, which would further crowd out uh, funds and cost the taxpayer more money. I think from my perspective, the compelling reason not to borrow is about affordability for future generations. Interest um, um, uh, on payments on borrowing uh, cost you real money, and that money will, be, um, will, will have an impact on needed um, revenues in the future. Uh, in, a, in addition to that, um, I think that we should take a look, and I've been urging the, the committee to take a look, uh, and, and the legislature, excuse me, to take a look at pay-go options. Um, a lot of states have reduced their borrowing. Um, now, again, uh, states are having different solutions to, um, to COVID, but uh, they've reduced their borrowings over time and looked at pay-go uh, methods. Um, in the TIB program, the Transportation Infrastructure Bond, we have bonds, but we also have a, a, the excess revenue um, can be used to pay for pro uh, transportation projects without bonding. That is a less expensive way of doing it. You get more bang for your buck, and it's a, uh, the least expensive way for the taxpayer. Um, I guess what I would point out that uh, we've got a situation that we need to deal with, um, but I do not believe that bonding um, um, to, again, to erase a deficit, um, borrowing your way out of a deficit is not an advisable situation. You wouldn't do it at home. And uh, I, I would suggest that, uh, you know, if you are in big debt, you know, the, uh, the uh, credit rating, uh, the credit um, assistance groups, uh, whoever they may be, aren't going to tell you to, to have more credit. Uh, they're going to talk to you about how do you change your expenditures, how do you change your revenue patterns, and what you can do to, for that. They're not going to suggest to you that if you're way in debt, that you should um, you should add more debt to the um, uh, to the um, uh, to the picture. Again, uh, if that uh, I hope that you. your question. Thank you, Dave. We have time well, for one last for... question. Oh, go ahead, Dave. Did you have a follow up? No, no, thank, thank you. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Um, is that there, is it, uh, so at, at any point other than for short-term borrowing where we use it for cash flow and it's internal, do you see a situation? 
I mean, you, you said instead of instead of borrowing, you would, you know, how do you how do you reduce or change expenditures, and how do you do something differently with your revenue picture? So okay. that's what you would look at prior to um, borrowing. Uh, I would uh, the the CDAC, the Capital Debt Affordability Advisory Committee, pre-COVID was talking about some methodologies to present to you on, on creating a pay-go system. Um, I uh, had a similar situ uh, system in, in a town that I worked for in Connecticut, and I will uh, not take credit for that. Was my uh, my my previous um, um, my boss that came up with that idea, and but it worked, and we created created something called a capital uh, non recurring expenditure fund. So we did short term and um, in mid term um, borrowing uh, for for different capital um, uh, needs through that uh, that mechanism, and we saved a boatload of money, and we were able to manage our um, um, our our capital planning with assistance from that. I uh, and again, when I've talked about borrowing, it's mostly been bricks and mortar. Some of the engineering costs that might be associated with that, borrowing to uh, to to close a revenue gap, again, is not something that um, that that I would advise. There are times, as I said, when you're when you're looking at preventive maintenance, when you're looking at the cost of inflation of um, of uh, asphalt or the cost of steel in the um, uh, in um, um, uh, earlier periods of time, I think that that's um, th that would be a time when you would take a look at it. Um, but um, we also have limited borrowing capacity, and we need to to manage that. Uh, you know, the rating agencies um, have, um, and I'm just going to quote. If you give me just a few more minutes, um, and this is from uh, uh, from a, one of our rating agencies, Fitch, uh, and from their last rating of us, and they did do a um, a um, an interim process of reviewing uh, during the COVID crisis and uh, our bond rating did not change. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. One AAA uh, state that I'm aware of did a lot of one-time gap things and, um, and uh, 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 they, uh, what they said is that there's a one in three chance that they're going to lower their, their bond rating. Um, so our GO rating reflects conservative financial management, including prompt action to address projected budget gaps as, um, as they emerge and maintenance of sound reserves, both of which the position the state well to absorb budgetary impl implications of the coronavirus pandemic. The moderate long-term liability burden measured as a percentage of personal income is above the median for US states, but should remain relatively stable given Vermont's close oversight and management of debt issuance and policy changes to improve the pension sustainability over time. That was uh, the, the, a quote directly from Fitch uh, that in our most recent um, review of our, our bonds and the publication of that. And, and I would I'd be willing to send that uh, that quote from Fitch and um, um, and and perhaps a, a maybe Ashlyn um, a, a few of just so that I have a document from the treasurer's office on borrowing. You don't need to. I don't need a two page document. Just a you know I've written most of it here. Uh, I, I wrote a and two a page from you. That would be great. I wrote a two page. We'll try to shorten it up. Okay. Um, um, Mary, did you have a question or no? You. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, if you'd like to talk us, to us more about the budget, um, again, I would ask uh, Michael Kloss and our deputy to come in. And again, um, I, I have additional data that I have not checked. Um, I was shooting a little from the hip, and I'd rather uh, rather correct that or, okay. or verify that uh, at, a, at a, a future time. And I know you want to talk about pensions as well. Um, and um, I love talking about pensions. Um, we ne do need to do some work in pension and OPEB liability. Abilities. I think we have um, um, a, um, some proposals in all four buckets with respect to both OPEBs and both pension plans, um, and would love to have a conversation with you folks about that. So, so what I would like to do, Beth, is to schedule a pension conversation that's separate from the budget or separate from our borrowing conversation. As far as your budget, I'm going to, um, Maida is just going to follow up with Michael, mm -hmm. you or Ashlyn, wherever you want us to follow up. Um, you mentioned that you also had to comply with the three percent savings, and you were able to do that without yes. um, with without impacting your operations. I'm hoping. Um, I'm, I'm, Maida will Maida will bring that back to the committee if you feel that you were able to absorb that three percent reduction. And um, Teresa, if we could schedule at a, a later time, 
um, closer, um, not next week, but maybe the like or like around the first or second, perhaps uh, to hear more about where we are with the pensions and perhaps if um, Beth has any suggestions for any restructuring at that point. Thank you. But I think um, I have um, another meeting that I need to get into. And so um, I am going to thank the treasurer for coming and uh, we look forward to the memo uh, that you could send us for a document from your office on borrowing. Uh, what I needed to tell the committee, a couple of things. So Beth, if you wanna sign off, you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to do a couple housekeeping things now and sure. thank you for coming in, it's always a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time. And again, I'd be happy to follow up on pensions um, and Mr. Yacovoni or any member of the committee, if you'd like to have some time with us, um, just give me a call, Mike.